The final efficiency and productivity tool I want to talk about is shortcuts. Experienced analysts can gain a huge amount of time, particularly in Microsoft Excel and PowerPoint, by using shortcuts to navigate around the screen and to perform different tasks. But how much time can they save you? I've always wanted to do this as a race, mouse against keyboard. In a second, Duncan and I are going to have a race to format this income statement. He's strictly going to use the keyboard, and I'm going to try and stick to the mouse. You also have the file, so feel free to pause the video here before we get started, and you can join in too. So are you ready, Duncan? Yeah, I'm ready. OK, well, I have a timer here at my end, so I'll start this. Um, for you guys joining in, feel free to do the same. The, the workbook is provided in, in the example folder, and you'll see a timer on the screen, so see how you get on. Right. Three, two, one, go. So I started here by using the mouse, and I was using control at the same time to select those different number cells. I wanted them to appear in blue, and so you can see me going through the color picker there. I then wanted to change all the black cells to that bold font, and so that's my next step. Meanwhile, Duncan has gone through the formatting of the header, changed those background colors, and he's already caught up actually on a lot of the formatting for the table just by using those keyboard shortcuts. In, he's just changed the number format, and now it looks like he's going through the numbers again, and with one keyboard shortcut, just applied the blue and black formatting to calculations versus inputs. So I'm not, I don't feel like I'm too far behind at this point, but as you'll see as time goes by, it's all the little more tricky tasks that take me a bit longer with the mouse. Choosing specific borders and changing number formats as I'm trying to do now is a bit more tricky. How are you getting on? I think I'm almost done. I'm hoping by what you said, you're not already finished. <laughs> no, I am. Uh, and unfortunately, I've left the most difficult task to last. So uh, I still got one more big job to do. Oh, no. Yeah, I'm all done. There you go. And let's do some number formatting here. So Seb, I may actually just go grab a coffee or something, if that's OK. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully I'll be finished when you get back. <laughs> okay, I'll, I'll see you when I come back. <laughs> so that took me quite a while to fiddle around with the number formats there to get the one that I wanted. That's all done. I should be left with the line and the borders to do on the header and I need to tidy up those units as well. I think I'm good. Oh, good. All done. That was pretty quick, actually. Yeah, it wasn't too bad, but um, I, I certainly skipped, I think, a couple of things. Uh, I notice your some of your lines are blue, whereas I stuck to the default black. And oh, okay. It was just a lot more work if I wanted to go in and change those settings before setting up the borders. So yeah. that would have slowed me down some more. Um, I also haven't included the uh, all figures in USD, which I should do at the top here. I, I wasn't as far as I thought I would be behind, but I guess I know. when you think about how much these differences compound over a whole day in Excel. Mm -hmm. it, it adds up to a crazy amount of time. It really does, yeah. So overall, I finished just under a minute behind Duncan, which doesn't seem like a lot, except when you consider that he took 1 minute 38, that means I added nearly 30% of the time onto this relatively small task. We've already spotted a couple of things that I didn't finish off correctly. I didn't choose the right blue. I didn't put the Fs after the forecast numbers in the titles. And I didn't change those superscript values correctly. So if I'd done all those, I'd have taken even longer. 
In the next video, I'm going to ask Duncan to take us through some of the most common shortcuts that he's using to speed up his work.